plaintiff, Yui Marsh, is a recovering alcoholic, and she claims she met the defendant in a detox facility. Yui says they became close friends until the defendant started verbally abusing her. Yui suing him today for two unpaid loans. Defendant Joel Kelly says he thought he and Yui were dating, but he admits it fell apart as a result of his alcoholism and the abusive behavior that went along with it. Joel insists Yui is suing for more than he owes. Start with you. All right. Um, first of all, um, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Um, I've been a functioning alcoholic for the past 15 years. And um, I actually met Joel at a- What have you been doing in recovery? How long have you been in recovery? Um, I've been in, in and out of recovery and the most I was able to put together was probably anywhere from 60 to 90 days in the when past. When did that start? When did you start first? Uh, so uh, 15 years ago. Okay. And how many times have you been to treatment in 15 years? Um, two times. When was the last time? The last time would be um, approximately two years ago. Two? Yes. That's how long correct. did you stay alcohol free, sober? So um, my sobriety date is 12 27 of last year. And I'm currently sober. Uh, I work with the sponsor closely, I still do the steps. I go to three to four meetings a week, mm -hmm. and I'm currently working with closely with two sponsees. Oh, you're going to make it. 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 And you're a great example of the work that needs to be done. And hey, folks, uh, if you uh, heard what she said and you hear it's a lot of work, how much work was it to hustle up on enough money to buy the dope or to buy enough alcohol to be an alcoholic? Right. That's work, too. I was the work getting clean than the work getting high and destroying my body, put it that way. Nonetheless, uh, we're proud of you. Thank you for uh, doing that and being a positive example. Um, where did you know the defendant from? Um, so I met him in a detox facility. And, um, and um, we- wasn't, for, wasn't a sex clinic, right? Wasn't sex rehab. No. Okay. It was you know like they more, have sex rehab. Yes. It, it was more like a, um, a hospital facility. I've been to it three facility. times. You've been to it three yeah. times. You're yeah. a dirty dog. I don't <laughs> think. And I think, however, they tell you guys in NA or a and or I don't know about AA. I know a lot about NA because I've had a lot of people I've had to help with that, help through that process. But I know they tell you that you should not date. That's correct. Because you get emotions tied up and that's a trigger also to a relapse. I bet y'all think I'm dope for as much as I know. <laughs> yeah. And everybody think I'm on crystal meth, I'm on Percocets, H. I'm on Oxycon, I'm on Heron, <laughs> I'm on, what else dope I know about? Pills. Pill, yeah, I'm a crack for <laughs> crack. sure. I'm crack. definitely a crackhead, much as I know about crack. <laughs> All right, but I'm not, folks. I just know because I've been there <laughs> and seen that and helped that, so, and still do. All right, so go ahead. My heart, you know, poured out to him because he has a son and I have a son also under the same name. And then, so that's where like, you know, um, this emotional connection started. Um, however, uh, um, his, he, his language, of it, you know, eventually started getting abusive and the gaslighting started. Page four, he said that, you know, if you need to pay the bills and get then get a job and save your money like everyone else, I've never asked for like a single penny, not even for my parents. And then I said, I do have a new job and a car. I'm a responsible person. He goes on to say, you know who else had a job and a car? Ted Bundy. So it makes me oh. feel like I'm the crazy person, if you know what I mean. Sir, you shouldn't be playing with those type of words. Let me hear from you. Give me some background and a little information on the uh, relationship. Um, well, I'm going to start by saying, obviously, Yui is a very beautiful, intelligent, generous woman. That's very clear. Um, she's right. We did meet in a drug and alcohol re rehabilitation program in approximately January 2020. Uh, we stayed friends. We got very close, just like she said, because of our the similarity. We both have little boys, the same name. Um, we stayed close the whole time. We were friends. And a year later, I felt like we were getting closer and starting to talk about having a relationship. I felt like we were dating because we, uh, we would talk every morning. We were, the language that we were using was, hey, baby, we would talk about things like 
future together, things you like that. You didn't consummate the relationship? Do we, we yeah. didn't have a relations? We did, we, yeah, we did, we were physical. We were physical one time in that, in that month of January, I believe. Uh, how long did you all date? In my opinion, I think it was probably about four weeks. Yeah, oh. in the beginning of January till we were only four, physical once. Yeah, to where it fell apart towards the end of January, mm-hmm. and that was a, and that was due to my drinking. I had, re- I had I'm also a, a recovering alcoholic, obviously, and I relapsed into drinking. And yeah, my behavior um, in respect and, and because of alcoholism, it was uh, dishonest. Um, my language was uh, was abusive. Defendant Joel Kelly claims he and the plaintiff started dating after meeting in rehab, but he admits things fell apart as a result of his alcoholism and the abusive behavior that went along with it. When did you relapse into oh, the condition, into the state in which you were doing at, at uh, the uh, verbal abuse, engaging? I would say about the the, um, the middle of January when I relapsed. 21? Yeah, or 2021, yes, sir. Okay. All right, so you went a year without relapse. Is that what you tell them? Yes, sir. So when you were cursing her out, was that the beginning or the end? That was after the relationship had ended. That, oh, right. I think now that comment is. was made sometime in April or March. Okay, she, she, so the uh, breakup sounds like it might have triggered your relapse. Uh, Could have. And that's yeah. what they tell you guys in yeah. the uh, NA and NAA. That's exactly why they don't want you to do it, because the breakup triggers a relapse. All right, sir, how are you doing now? I still struggle with drugs and alcohol. Well, alcohol mostly. How many times have you been to rehab? I've been to rehab in and out since I was 14, I would say more than a dozen times. Yeah, in and out of jail since then, and then finally found myself in prison because of alcohol abuse. Yeah. Drugs, what type of drugs though? Um, I've experimented with drugs, methamphetamines and things like that. I don't use drugs now, yeah. It's my, my struggle is with alcohol. So I am I am part of that community. And you've been 12? 12, 12 inpatient rehabs before, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the most I've heard is like eight. And I always talk about a person that, uh, the person that I stood with for so many years, for like 25 years, I had to get him in rehab seven times yeah. before it worked. Seven. And so my goodness, 12 is, I think so, yeah. yeah. That's a lot, sir. And your last relapse was when? Or when is the last time you drank? Uh, I've, I've continued, I've still continued. All right, continued so you need yeah. some, you need to go to the 13th I'm time. Well, I'm, I'm currently on a leave of absence from work so that I can find a program and then get back Are involved. Are you in one? Uh, oh, Have I'm, you found I'm, one yet? I'm probably gonna go back to the one that we were in. Cause it's All right, well, I'm gonna there. make sure our staff uh, follows up with you to make sure Appreciate you get that. into a program. Yeah. Because my goodness, 12 times yeah. though, how was the longest time you've stayed? Sober? No. Oh, in, 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 in treatment? In I would say maybe 30, 38 days. I, I stayed in sober living for two years. I was clean for two years in sober living program. So after I got out of prison, I was sent to sober living. So I did have that program. Oh, and we were part of that, that community of yeah. of sponsorship. And I can't explain the relapses other than what I do know is it, stress and emotional issues and trauma mm. sends folks to alcohol and drug addiction. That's all I know. All right, and let's get to the unpaid loans you're suing him for, because that's what you're ready to get to. you like, I didn't heard all this. <laughs> I didn't heard all this a thousand times. I go to NA or AA every week. You don't have to keep telling me that. That's how she's doing Yeah. <laughs> can we get to my case? So, yes, we can. I'm sorry. Yeah, loans that he owes you for. Tell me what months uh, that you loaned the money to him and when did he agree to repay? What um, so, so the first time I lent, lent him the money was in January of this year. How much? <clears throat> you all right over there? You all right? Know, grab her, grab her, grab her. Thank God. All right, it, we're going to go in ahead chair, and turn right, this another time. We'll give you some water, miss. Ooh, thank God. Court is back in session. Please remain seated. All right, welcome back, Ms. Marsh and Mr. Kelly. 
you know, we had to adjourn the case because of an emergency that we were able to tend to. So thank you. And here we are again. You all don't think I can remember from yesterday, but I can. And last we were talking, you were explaining uh, the loans that you're suing him for, for 1825. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so in January, I loaned him 1525, and he specifically told me that was for um, family law attorney fees. When would he pay? Um, there was no specific um, contract or anything, okay. but I was under the impression that he would make the initiative to start paying me back like in the near future. All right. And what did happen? Um, it never really happened and I never heard from him like regarding the money. And then so um, that's why um, I had to ask him uh, and things kind of got screwy from after that. Defendant Joel Kelly claims he and the plaintiff started dating after meeting in rehab, but he admits things fell apart as a result of his alcoholism and the abusive behavior that went along with it. Sir, what do you say to this? The 1525. Um, the 1525, it was for, um, she did send that to me. Um, on a, uh, I have the evidence, so I direct you to page one. Of the I believe transaction. she says it, and if you say she did, we yeah. don't need to look at any she evidence. Did, she did send that to me. Um, it was for, uh, for family law, mm -hmm. for a custody case. Um, there was no specific contract written. Um, and I can actually direct you to page eight of, I think, of the text, where I suggest that we even, I say that the, Yes, my my uh, my attorney is still available. If you want to drop a loan agreement, I'm sure you could download a generic one, and I give her the amount of fifteen twenty five I need for the what retainer. What page is that? It was page eight. What'd she say? She said, "I believe in you as a father. I think that you're a good dad, and I'm going to give this to you because I know that you need help." Let's see. That was the verbal conversation. I'm trying to look, uh, and that's enough. Verbal is enough. Good morning. If you want to draw up a loan, just like you said, we can. You are so awesome. You say. Meant to send it out. Where's all this? You a great father. You don't have to pay me. What page is that on? Uh, That's oh, what I'm looking for. The pay. I don't have to pay her. Pardon me. I'm sorry. I, I don't understand the question, Your Honor. You said you. I was supposed to read something. Oh, I down. was just directing. To, I was saying where I was directly. I suggested that we make a loan agreement, and then I wanted to direct you to page six. Whereas this is the first time I've ever heard of any ask uh, any no, no, type no. of repayment. You had told me you had something where she said you were a great father and therefore. No, that was a verbal agreement. That that was the verbal between her and I. Where, so where what she is it you wanted me to read that made a difference in this case? Where I suggested that we make a loan agreement and then further on, nothing was ever mentioned about it. Nothing. There was no response saying, okay, let's make an agreement. Okay, but we, the first we know, it, you wouldn't offer to make an agreement for a loan if, if you didn't make one. You you made an agreement. So why didn't you pay her? I, I, I was simply asking if she wanted to make a loan agreement. Just, right, because that's an assumption that you owed them. And, and, it, was, and it, was, it, was a, it was trying to be in good faith, but verbally she said it was a gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You double talking yourself. Right, you ain't even double talking me. You double talking yourself. Let's make this quick. One thousand eight hundred twenty-five dollars. He's confused, or he's trying to confuse me. No. <laughs> Have a good day. I think everybody deserves, you know, like a happy destiny. You know, the sobriety. And I'm so like proud that you know you're gonna you have the courage to like try to you know stay sober and stuff. So okay. I really best the wish for you. Thank you, Yuri. I'm sorry this happened. Fifteen hundred dollars is not worth the price of a friendship or any kind of relationship. It's not. It's not the money.